Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkfin Homestead. I have another fun what we eat in a week video for you guys. So the very first meal that I am making is a sourdough naan pizza. I am not a huge fan of the really thick pizza crust. I just find it's too much bread and it's just way too filling. I love a thin crust pizza and I really love sourdough crust. So I thought I would make my sourdough naan recipe and try to incorporate that and use that as a crust. So what I am doing is I am taking a half cup or 120 grams of milk. You can use dairy or plant-based. Any of those work well for this. And then I took a quarter cup or 60 grams of yogurt. Now I actually did not have yogurt. I used a milk kefir instead that had been it's been sitting in the fridge for a day, so it's been kind of on its second ferment. So I use that instead of yogurt, but if you are not eating dairy products, plant-based would work perfectly fine in this. Then I took half a cup or 125 grams of star sourdough starter discard. The recipe does state to use an unfed sourdough discard. This recipe does have to rise for about eight hours. Not sure how it would work if you actually use like a fed one. And then I added a tablespoon of avocado oil, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and then two and a half cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour. Now, I don't actually have a recipe to leave linked for you guys. I found this online a long time ago. I've been making this for a while and I unfortunately don't have any linkable recipe to give you guys, but I will leave these exact measurements for you in the video description if you wanna give it a try. So after I mix everything together, it's really good to mix it with your hands. That way you get everything incorporated. You're gonna cover it with plastic wrap or some type of covering and you're gonna you're gonna leave it sit in a warm place for about eight hours. After the eight hours, you're gonna take it out and you're gonna divide it into eight equal pieces. It says the pieces should be about 78 grams each. I am not that technical. I just kind of eyeball everything. It just makes for an easier process for me. You're gonna shape the pieces into a ball and then you're gonna cover it with a towel. It says at this point, you can store these in a covered container in the fridge for up to three days. So if you don't wanna make this recipe right away, you wanna make it in advance, it will store in the fridge for three days. Then it says if you want to use it after that fact, let the dough come to room temperature before you actually start making the naans. So once we got it resting, you actually have to get a cast iron skillet heated on the stovetop. Now it says to heat your skillet for about 10 to 15 minutes. It needs to get good and hot because it's very much like you're making a tortilla where you're just gonna like have it sitting on that cast iron for about two minutes. So you're gonna roll the dough out and it says to get it to about one eighth of an inch thick and you definitely need to use flour on the surface just that way it doesn't stick because this is a pretty sticky dough. So I'm using my rolling pin here and just making these dough rounds. It says it should be about six inches in diameter. I am not too finicky with following that. I Plus I was using these as a pizza crust, so I kind of wanted them a little bit bigger. So once you get it all rolled out, you're gonna put it in your hot skillet and you're gonna cook it on one side for two minutes. Then you're gonna flip it over and on the second side, you're gonna cook it for one to two minutes. It does puff up a little bit. You, it says you can flip the naan one more time and just watch for it um, just to puff up with the air and then you just remove it from a skillet and then just put it aside. You can make these in advance also and they can freeze for up to three months. I actually might do that and make some because I really, really, really enjoyed these pizzas. We actually had these two nights in a row. They were so good. So Steven wanted to have some ham on his. So I just took some previously made ham that I just, chop it up and throw it in the freezer. So I had it defrosted, so I just chopped up some ham for him. And now I'm just grating the mozzarella cheese. I also make pesto in advance. Whenever it is gardening season, like this is last year's pesto, I make a whole bunch of it and I just put it in Ziploc baggies and then freeze it. And we had pesto throughout the whole winter months. It was amazing. So I'm trying to actually eat through it now because we are now in basil season. So I'm gonna be making some more fresh stuff. So I'm trying to get that old stuff out. 
Now this is just a tomato from my garden and unfortunately it looks like it, it was a little bit bad on some sides so I'm just cutting off some of those sides but I was, I'm so happy to be incorporating fresh ingredients from my garden into all of our meals again. It's just, it's so much different eating fresh food versus eating preserved food. I mean there's a time in the season you for eating the preserved stuff, but fresh is definitely my favorite time. So I have some Jevonese or sweet basil there and I'm just chopping it up. So this is gonna be my pizza. I'm gonna take the pesto and use that as a base. I am not a fan of like a pizza sauce. I'll eat it, but pesto or like an Alfredo sauce is my favorite base for the pizza. So I just spread the pesto out and then I'm putting some mozzarella cheese and just sprinkling a little bit of granulated garlic on there. I just kind of want a little bit of garlic flavor. I'm going to add those sliced tomatoes and sliced basil and then just top it with a little bit more mozzarella cheese. Now I put these pizzas in the oven at 400 degrees and I cook them for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, once they were good and brown, I actually turned the broiler on for two minutes just so that they could get, you know, nice and bubbly. And then my pizza, I actually topped with some of that balsamic glaze. After we had this, I honestly don't think that I am ever going to go back back to making the traditional pizza doughs because these were just a perfect thin crust pizza. For the next recipe, I am making a ice mint tea or another name for it is an Amish meadow tea. I actually got this recipe from another YouTuber. I follow her on Instagram, Ruth Ann Zimmerin, and she actually did a YouTube video on it. And I will leave it linked for you guys in the video description if you want to check it out because she does go into more detail about how to make it and stuff. I'm doing a very base quick run through on how I made it. So in the sink here, I just have some fresh picked mint, mint leaves and I'm just removing them from the stem. Now the recipe calls for two cups of packed mint leaves. I actually probably am going to end up using more next time I make this recipe because it wasn't quite minty enough for me. It was very, very sweet. So I'm probably going to add more mint and less sugar next time I make it. So you're going to add all of your mint leaves to the water sugar mixture and you're going to cover it and you're going to simmer it for 8 to 12 hours. After the 8 to 12 hours, you are going to drain off the mint leaves just over a strainer here. Now this is a tea concentrate. So you're gonna use one part of this concentrate to six to eight parts of water according to how sweet you like it. Pretty much the way that I think of this meadow tea is that this is a mint simple syrup. <laughs> it's so, so sweet. It is very, very refreshing, but it's just really, really sweet. <laughs> so I'm probably, like I said, next time I make it, because I will be making it, it is a good, really good way to use up mint leaves. And it's very, very refreshing, but I'm just gonna go a little bit lighter on the sugar. And there it is once it's all made. Perfect recipe. For the next recipe, I am making some sourdough discard waffles. I think I've actually done a video before on making these, but they are a favorite. We have them about probably once a month, maybe not quite once a month. It's kind of craving a nice, kind of hearty, full breakfast because we had a lot of garden work that had to get done this day, so I really wanted something that was gonna fill us really good. And plus, I kind of like having fancy breakfast sometimes. You know, it's special to have it every once in a while. So what I'm doing is I am taking half a cup of sourdough starter, and this is just a discard, so it's not fed. Um, then I took one cup of whole milk, three tablespoons of unsalted butter, one large egg, one cup of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of sea salt. I kind of modified this a little bit and I added probably about a teaspoon of vanilla. I like adding vanilla to everything. It kind of adds, you know, that, that extra sweetness to a dish. Now there was not enough flour in here because I kind of added, you know, with the extra liquid with the vanilla and plus my, depending on the how big your egg is and how watery your starter is, it can turn out to be a little bit more of a watery batter. I like mine thicker, so I just added a little bit of flour to it there. I have my waffle iron preheated. I did try to link this waffle iron for you guys, um, but unfortunately I cannot find it on Amazon. It is a February 
waffle iron i love it i've had it now i think for three years really really good quality one um so i'm just adding about two thirds cup of waffle mix like that batter to my hot waffle iron and i like to just kind of grease it with a little bit of butter now one thing that i am making just to kind of make it you know a little bit more fancy is i am just going to make up some whipped cream so i just kind of eyeballed it i probably added about one cup of heavy whipping cream and one teaspoon of organic cane sugar and I'm just gonna whip it until I get that whipped cream consistency I thought that this would just kind of make it you know that extra fancy step and just just make it a really nice meal so made the whipped cream I had some bacon that I put in the oven earlier and then we just picked up some fresh peaches from a local orchard they were actually pretty expensive so we didn't pick up very much I guess because our winter was fairly warm here and then all of a sudden in March it just kind of shifted to really cold. So all of the peach trees actually started to blossom really early and then we got a hard frost in March which caused all the blossoms to fall off the trees. So our peaches, if the orchard has them, they're very expensive. So I'm trying to just you know get them while they're in season i'm probably gonna go and see if i can find maybe some south carolina peaches so i'm just getting everything plated up there it was such a nice fancy just a special breakfast so we are still in the height of zucchini season so i am really trying to just get zucchinis incorporated to almost all of our meals i know that there's going to come a season where we're not gonna have any zucchinis so we're just eating them now because again we do seasonally eat so when something is in abundance we really do eat a lot of it and then as soon as it's done we don't really eat very much of it anymore so the recipe I'm making tonight was a very very good recipe it was definitely a winner um, it is a cheesy zucchini breadstick recipe I found this recipe on Instagram and I will leave the link for it below because she does have a blog that has it on it so I just took two large zucchinis there and I grated them up she says about four cups now she does stress in the recipe that you really need to make sure that they are well drained they have a lot of moisture in it and you need to try to get out as much as possible so I just put it in all there and just drained it as much as I could now the recipe does also call to use half a small white or yellow onion grated and then and again draining that liquid but because Stephen was going to be eating this and he does not like the texture of onions I just used a granulated onion powder there I added two teaspoons of minced garlic and then two large room temperature eggs and I just beat them up a little bit there then I added half a cup of cheese now the recipe calls for white cheddar cheese shredded I didn't have it I'm just using this marbled cheese it worked perfect then we added one teaspoon of salt half a teaspoon of black pepper and then two cups of just a organic unbleached flour all-purpose flour and then you want to make sure that you really get this stirred really good together I was stirring for quite some time and it was just not coming together I actually had to put my spoon down and stir this with my hands in order to get it all incorporated kind of reminded me of making a sourdough it you don't want to add more liquid to it because it was perfect the way it was I just needed to get it better incorporated so you may have to use your hands but what you want to do then is just empty it out onto a lined baking sheet and use parchment paper Paper. I was going to use my um, silicone liners but I thought that this parchment was going to be a little bit better so I used that and I'm glad I did so you want to get it down to about a half an inch thick layer you do not want it too thick because it will not crust up you're gonna put it in the oven at 450 degrees for 30 minutes after the 30 minutes you're gonna take it out add some more parchment paper to the top of it and then you're actually gonna flip this what we're trying to do is just brown the other side of it again because zucchini is very moisture heavy you want to just make sure that you're getting this to almost a bread consistency so we flip it and then on the other side so now what is the top of it we're gonna add one cup of cheese she suggests using mozzarella cheese again I didn't have it so I just used that marble cheese worked perfect quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese 
half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and half a teaspoon of fresh chopped parsley if you have it. You're gonna lower your oven down to 425 and you're gonna put this back into the oven for about another 15 minutes or until the cheese is melted and the crust is crispy. You're gonna take it out of the oven and you're going to then slice it when it's hot. I found that I had to slice it hot versus letting it cool down a bit because once it cools down, it gets really hard to cut. It is really kind of like a cheesy bread. Like, you know, from those pizza places, it really tasted like a cheesy bread. Even is not a zucchini fan. He says it over and over again that he does not like zucchini. He took seconds of this bread. It is so delicious. You cannot taste any zucchini in it and it really does taste like a pizza style cheesy bread. Definitely, definitely a good way to use zucchini. So for the next meal, I am going to do a meatless meal. I am really trying to kind of get more meatless meals incorporated into our weekly menus. It is really, really good for the budget to kind of have at least one meatless meal. So tonight's meal is going to be a Cajun pasta. This is one of my favorite meatless ones. It is a really filling dish and you really don't notice the lack of meat in it. It's, it's really, really good. I used a macaroni to make this. I had a whole bunch of of macaroni that I needed to get used up so I decided I was going to use that as a pasta you can use whatever pasta you like or whatever pasta you have on hand the recipe calls for 10 ounces of pasta so I accidentally cooked way too much pasta there I have about two pounds of pasta so it worked out good because I actually got to use it the following night so I used one can of my home canned black beans just drain them and rinse them really well and then I took one can of my diced tomatoes. These are just a tomato that is canned with no extra seasoning. There's no salt in there. So they are canned in really big chunks. So I just wanted to kind of chop them up a bit. I will leave the recipe linked for you guys in the video description where you can get the exact measurements of what it calls for. So you're just going to add the black beans to those tomatoes and then the recipe itself says five cloves of garlic. I just did a heaping teaspoon of garlic. And then I added half a cup of heavy whipping cream here. You can use a non-dairy milk. In fact, the recipe calls for half a cup of coconut milk. You're gonna add two teaspoons of Cajun seasoning, and then you are going to add two teaspoons of a smoked paprika. Now you can add onion to this, but I don't use onion in my cooking because of a texture issue. So I can use onion flavoring. So I just use some onion granules there and then you want to add salt and pepper to taste. Um, I did a little taste test on this and I found that I needed to add more salt to it. The recipe also states that you can add half a cup of chopped bell pepper and you can add one cup of chopped mushrooms. I didn't have any of those fresh on hand so I didn't use them. Whenever I make this recipe it ends up being really thin so I wanted to thicken it up a bit so I'm just taking a couple teaspoons of arrowroot there and mixing them with some water. Arrowroot is the exact same thing as a um, cornstarch. It does the exact same thing it's just a gluten-free option so I'm just stirring in that air root there to get the sauce more of a thicker sauce you can leave it completely thin you don't need to do this step but I like more of a thick sauce so I just got that added in and you want to simmer it for a couple of minutes just to kind of get it good and bubbly and then you're gonna add your pasta to it so the recipe says 10 ounces of pasta I was just eyeballing it because I knew I had actually made too much this recipe actually turned out really good with the macaroni. It was kind of like a Cajun macaroni. Now you can add cheese to it at this point and it probably would make it like a Cajun mac and cheese. I just didn't, but it was a really, really good meal. So for the next meal, I am going to be making a jalapeno popper chicken casserole. I found this recipe on Pinterest and it looked really good. My jalapeno plants are really starting to produce a lot, so I'm trying to get 
using garden produce in all of my meals. So this recipe was perfect to use up some. You're gonna take six jalapeno peppers. Now you see there, mine are pretty small. Um, if you're buying like a grocery store one, you probably wouldn't need to get six of them. You probably could use less. But even despite using this amount of jalapenos in this recipe, this was not a spicy recipe. And those are spicy jalapenos. This was a really, really mild tasting recipe. You're gonna take one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breasts and you're going to chop them up into bite-sized pieces. And then you're gonna take a pound of bacon and you're gonna also chop that up into bite-sized pieces. Now the really cool thing about this recipe was it says to cook both of them together because what that, the bacon essentially is seasoning your chicken. It does not call to add salt and pepper to this and I definitely, when I make this again, will be adding salt and pepper to that because this recipe was lacking salt. I really had to add quite a bit at the end when I was actually plating it up because it just was, it was missing something. You're gonna take two eight ounce packages of softened cream cheese and add them to a medium sized mixing bowl and then one cup of sour cream. Just add that to the bowl. The other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, you are going to take one pound of pasta and get that boiling. And once it's boiling, you're gonna drain it and just kind of set it aside. You can use whatever pasta you like in this recipe. I actually had leftover macaroni from the previous night, so I ended up using that in here. Then you're gonna take about one and a half cups of a shredded cheese. I just used a marble cheese here. The recipe actually specifies to use a Mexican Jack Cheddar cheese in this, but the marble worked perfectly fine. Then you're gonna add your jalapenos to that and then get that all stirred up. You're gonna take your nine by 13 casserole dish and you're gonna layer it with your cooked pasta. And then you're gonna put your chicken and bacon on top of that pasta mixture. And then you're gonna take your cream cheese mixture where you mixed your sour cream and everything together. And then you're just gonna spread that evenly over top of the chicken and bacon mixture. And then you're going to use about half a cup of shredded cheese and then just top that with shredded cheese. What I didn't do is actually reserve some bacon and jalapenos because the recipe does say to top this with that. Luckily, I had some leftover cooked bacon in my fridge. So I just sliced some of that up and put that on top. And then I didn't save any jalapenos because I didn't read the recipe all the way through. But if you did read the recipe, you can top this with more jalapenos. You're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes. Now, I actually had to end up cooking this for about 35 minutes and then I threw it on broil for the last couple minutes and it turned out really, really good. As a side vegetable, we are kind of in corn season and one of Stephen's co-workers actually gave him a whole bunch of his corn. He had too much of them. So I just boiled up a couple cobs and then we just had that on the side. I'll be making this recipe again for sure. It was a really good meal. Uh, the one thing that I actually forgot to mention to you guys, it does state to use onion in here. I just use some granulated onion just to add that flavor. Um, maybe that's where it was lacking, but overall we really, really did enjoy this meal. For the next meal, I wanted to try to find something that I could get some peaches used up. We're in peach season right now and I'm gonna be starting to preserve peaches soon. So I'm trying to clear off last year's stuff that I canned up. So I was looking for a peach recipe that I could do for dessert one night. I found this one on Pinterest. It is called a peach butter swim biscuit. This recipe is really interchangeable. You could use this for like a dessert or even a breakfast. It, it turned out really, really good. So I'm just taking a nine by nine baking dish there and I'm just getting it greased all around and then I took a quart of my peaches and the recipe does state to well drain them she said unfortunately in this particular recipe canned peaches are the way to go using frozen or fresh she said it's going to alter the overall texture of the final biscuit and it actually won't cook correct so she says use canned peaches and drain them really well so to a large mixing bowl there I just added two and a half cups of of a unbleached all-purpose flour. I added a quarter cup of organic cane sugar, a tablespoon of baking powder, and then I added two cups of heavy cream and one 
teaspoon of vanilla extract. You're gonna stir that until it kind of all comes together. And then you're gonna add your peaches in. You're gonna give that a really light stir. You don't wanna over stir it. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take half a cup or one stick of salted butter. And she says you need to use salted because it really aids to that sweet and salty taste. You're gonna melt it. You could do it in the microwave or a saucepan and you're gonna add it to the bottom of that baking dish. Then you're gonna put your biscuit dough on top and she says to use your hands to squish it in so that it gets kind of evenly throughout and it does state that it is okay if the butter starts to come up over the sides. I have my oven preheated at 450 degrees and this is going to cook for about 35 minutes. Halfway through the cooking process I actually had to take it out and put it on a baking dish because as you can see by the smoke coming up it boiled over and I have a huge mess on the bottom of my oven now. <laughs> but she also says to tent it with aluminum foil halfway through that way you don't get a burnt biscuit. Once the biscuits are done, you're gonna take them out and let them cool a little bit, and then you're gonna make an icing to go on top. You're just gonna add one cup of icing sugar, three tablespoons of milk, and then half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then you're just gonna pour it on top of your warm biscuits there. This recipe turned out really, really good. We enjoyed it. So that's gonna be the last meal on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's recipes. Really trying to experiment with some new stuff and use up some stuff that we've got on the pantry shelf because we are in the height of gardening season and I'm going to be bringing in a lot of fresh stuff going forward. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.